enjoy a narrated virtual tour of hang gliders and ultralight aircraft exhibited at the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum, Stephen F. Udvar Heise Center. The museum is in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., is free to visit, but there is a $15 parking fee. The Sport Wing's Valkyrie hang glider's wing was long and thin and slightly swept, and both leading and trailing edges ran straight from the root to the wingtips. Steel cables braced the wing and steadied the pilot who sat in a swing seat and controlled pitch by shifting weight fore and aft. Australian Bill Bennett helped promote hang gliding in the late 1960s and early 70s, and his first gliders were kites for water skiers, such as the Delta Wing Model 162 seen here. His designs were based on flexible Regella wing gliders that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration developed as a possible recovery system for Gemini and Apollo capsules, as seen in this photo. As the excitement of flying and the ease of access to flights provided by the NASA-inspired Regala Wing appealed to the free-wheeling sports leisure culture of the late 1960s, Bennett's kites grew in popularity. The Delta Wing Phoenix 6B had deflexor cables mounted on the wing's leading edges as a standard feature. Pilots could tighten or loosen these cables to change the wing shape for better flying performance and increased stability. During factory assembly, technicians rigged and tuned the glider to fly with a tendency to pitch up in high-speed flight, an auto-recovery mode that helped pilots safely recover from high-speed dives. iPerformance considered their Cumulus 10 too hot for novice pilots to handle and recommended that only pilots certified for the highest level of flight experience certification, the Hang 4 rating, could safely fly it. It was popular among competition pilots through the end of the decade, but by 1980, flexible wing hang gliders began to appear, overtaking the Cumulus 10 in popularity. In 1980, Delta Wing introduced the Viper with a stiffer and more aerodynamically efficient high aspect ratio wing structure, but without a significant increase in weight. It was designed to appeal to pilots who earned a Hang 3 glider pilot classification and advanced skill rating. The Delta Wing Streak was the most advanced Delta Wing hang glider yet. It quickly became popular for competition flying when streak pilots finished first in several meets. It was an excellent glider that pilots continued to fly 15 years after it first appeared. On June 20, 2002, Lawrence Pete Lehman set a world record for the longest hang glider flight to a declared goal when he flew his Wells Wing Talon 150, 321 miles from Zappa, Texas to Big Lake, Texas. Lehman's nine-hour goal flight, which he had to declare before taking off, exceeded the previous record by 10 miles and reached a maximum altitude of 9,000 feet. Technological advances in low-cost and lightweight airframes and power plants during the 1960s and 70s ignited public enthusiasm for a new kind of minimalist aviation, ultralight aircraft. Pterodactyl Limited developed a fledgling by adding landing gear, an engine, and other improvements to the rigid wing Manta Fledge hang glider. This American Aerolite's Double Eagle is the first known ultralight aircraft employed by a police force, the Monterey Park Police Department. After seven engine failures in six months, it was grounded. The Mitchell U-2 Superwing is an improvement of the earlier B-10 airframe with a modified wing and an added completely enclosed cockpit while giving builders the option to install fixed or retractable landing gear. Pilots could operate the wing tip rudders either independently providing yaw control or simultaneously for aerodynamic braking. 
Stabilators suspended at the trailing edge of each outboard wing panel provided pitch and roll control. More than 1,500 super wing kits were sold by the mid-1980s, largely because Mitchell initially priced the basic kit to sell at $2,795, less the engine and painting. Ultralight Sales Limited's Ultraflight Lazare SSEC was one of the first twin-engine ultralights, and the configuration marked an important step to increasing the reliability of these simple and inexpensive aircraft. All Lazares shared the same basic airframe, but each model was equipped with different engines, a different cockpit enclosure, and structural modifications to support increases in engine power. John Chioda crafted the basic JC-24 airframe in 1976. Few could foresee the Weed Hopper's success after it first flew in May 1977, but in 2001, dealers in the United States continued selling single and two-seat Weed Hoppers. The Weed Hopper model JC-24C first flew during August 1980. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of hang gliders and ultralight aircraft displayed in the Stephen F. Udvarhazy National Air and Space Museum. If you would like to tour other aircrafts in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube suggested links on similar topics that you may enjoy.